everyone and welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to learn how to build an XRPL crypto wallet and keys. In your HTML, make sure you have the XRPL.js library loaded in or installed with NPM if you're using a node project. Then in your JavaScript, we're going to build an asynchronous function called create wallet. In here, the first thing we have to do is connect to our XRPL client with a server. We're going to connect to a test net because you can get free test XRP coin at port 51233. So this will allow us to connect to the test net of the XRP ledger. We can then call await API.connect. Once the connection is done, we can create a wallet. So if you want to have a wallet, you use the XRPL library dot wallet class and you can use the generate function. Then you can log out your wallet to inspect your results. One more thing we have to do is call API dot disconnect. This is going to end the process at the end. Otherwise, by default, Node.js won't end the process. Then we want to call our function create wallet so that the function is executed. And then in your console, you will see an object returned called G. This is your wallet. You'll have a classic address, a private key, a public key, and a seed. These are four different elements that can be used to identify your wallet. So just like that, you have generated a new wallet and its keys, the private key and the public key, with the XRP LJS library. The private key is like your password that shouldn't be shared, and the public key is like your address that you can give out, similar to the classic address. Then the seed is like the private key. Again, you should keep that private. And you can generate as many wallets as you'd like each time you run this, you're going to get a different object returned. So every time you run the function, you'll get a new wallet. So this is useful every time you want to create a wallet. All right, so that is how you can create a cryptocurrency wallet with the XRPLJS library. Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to learn how to build and fund an XRP Ledger testnet wallet. The XRP LJS library has a wallet class to handle the keys and addresses of an XRP ledger account. So join me in a JavaScript project. In your HTML, you should have a link to the XRP LJS library, or you should have it installed with NPM if using a node project. Then let's write our JavaScript. We're going to build an asynchronous function called fund wallet. Inside of this function, we're going to first connect to the XRP ledger with a new client and we'll pass in our server, which will be Ripple test, which means we're connecting to the test network. Then we're going to await the connection. Once the connection is done, we can create a wallet and fund it with the testnet faucet. So we can create a const called wallet and use the function await API dot fund wallet. Then we can console.log out the wallet result. Open up the console and we do have to call the function fund wallet and then we'll be able to see our results where we have the API, the connection, and then calling the funding of the wallet. And look at our returned object. We have a balance of a thousand and we have the wallet details. So in this object, we can get the balance and we can get the wallet. This balance has a thousand drops that have been funded by the test net faucet. A faucet allows you to request test XRP coin for the test net. And you can also request development XRP for the development network. But if you want to produce for the main net, then you have to use your real XRP coin. So from this wallet, we can get the balance and log that out. So let's just wait a moment for the run to occur. Then this time we'll see that we can access the balance property and we can also access the wallet property from our object. So we can wait for 
the funded wallet to be returned and we get this wallet object which shows us the address of the wallet, the private key, the public key, and the seed. Those are details that identify the wallet. Then at the end we should call api.disconnect because it won't disconnect on its own. All right, so that is how you can build a new XRP Ledger wallet and fund it with test XRP from the testnet faucet, which means that now you could use this wallet to do transactions because now the wallet actually has funds for the transaction fees. Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lecture, we're beginning our look at how to send XRP with JavaScript. To start off, we're going to learn how to prepare an XRP transaction with JavaScript. In your HTML, make sure you have a link to the XRPLJS library or that you have the library installed with NPM if you're using a node project. Then let's get started preparing a transaction of XRP in JavaScript. So I'm going to create an asynchronous function called send XRP. Inside of the function, I'm going to connect to the API with a new XRPL.client object. And I'm going to connect to a server that is going to allow me to access the test network. So now I have my API so I can use it to make a connection to the server. Then we can create a wallet object with the function fund wallet and we can log out the wallet object. There are other functions for creating a wallet. This is just one option for creating a wallet and funding it with a thousand drops for the test network. Then let's call the function to test this out. And inside of our console, we can run our JavaScript or wait for it to load automatically. And we're going to get a wallet object returned. So this is an object that contains two properties, the balance and the wallet itself. So you have to be careful here later on, we're going to need the wallet itself. So whatever function you use, Yes, we do have the wallet object, but then we have to get the wallet itself by grabbing the wallet object dot wallet property. So just make sure for your wallet constant that you actually have a reference to the wallet property, not the object. All right, so now we have our wallet. We can then prepare our transaction. So I am going to create here prepared transaction, a new constant and I'm going to use api.autofill. This is a JavaScript function part of the xrpl.js library that allows us to fill in the details about the transaction starting with the transaction type such as a payment because if you are transferring or sending xrp that is a payment because xrp is the native cryptocurrency. Then you can pass in the account that will do the transaction. And we're going to use the wallet.classic address property from the wallet. This is the wallet address. Again, make sure you're using the wallet property, not the entire wallet object. Then we can specify the amount that we want to send using xrpl.xrp to drops. And here we can pass in how much XRP we want to send, like one, and it will be converted to drops because the amount has to be in drops. Then we can pass in a destination. So we can create a second wallet or pass in a wallet that will receive our funds. So I could create a second wallet object called wallet object two. And I can use my API to fund that wallet. Then as my destination, I can pass in the wallet object to dot wallet dot classic address. So that will be the destination that will receive the transaction. All right, then you can inspect the prepared transaction. So you can test it out by logging it out and verifying that you can perform that transaction with api.autofill. So this is just preparing the transaction. 
Later on, we are going to have to sign and send the transaction. All right, so we can see the details about the transaction, the account, the amount, the destination, the fee, flags, last ledger sequence, sequence and transaction type. All right, so our prepared transaction is a valid constant. All right, so now that we have prepared the transaction, we're going to sign and submit the transaction. So join me in the next lecture. Hello everyone and welcome back. Previously, we learned how to prepare an XRP transaction with JavaScript. In this lecture, we're going to sign and submit the transaction with JavaScript. So we're going to continue our project. So we have to use the sign function in order to sign the transaction. For that, we are going to create a constant here called signed and use our wallet variable, which has a sign function where we can pass in the prepared transaction. This is going to take a transaction and sign it with a wallet. So signing means you are specifying who is doing the transaction, who is going to pay for the fees. And we can log out the signed constant to inspect its value in the console. So we can pop open the console tab and we can run the snippet if it doesn't automatically start running. Again, make sure you are using the wallet property from your wallet object. Then we're going to sign the prepared transaction. And just be patient here, wait a few seconds and it'll come up. You will have an object returned that has the hash and the transaction blob containing the transaction data. So that is a successful message. This is signing the transaction. Then we have to submit it. So I'm going to call the API and use the function submit and wait. Here I'm going to pass in the signed transaction dot TX blob. That contains the data, that's the property with the data of the transaction, and that is what we actually send to our API. Then we can get our results with a constant, and we can log out the results. And as per best practice, at the end, you should call the API and disconnect, because it won't do it automatically. Then let's wait a moment for the code to execute or run it yourself by clicking the run button on your online code editor or call your node package to run your JavaScript. Okay, so we're going to wait for the wallet to be created and then for the transaction to be prepared, then for the transaction to be signed and for the transaction to be submitted. And after a few seconds, we get our result. We get an object of an ID, a result and type response. You can open up the result object and you'll see the account, the amount, the destination. So we have the account from where the funds were sent, the account to where the funds were sent, the amount of funds in drops, the fee, the flags, the last ledger sequence, the sequence, signing public key, transaction type, transaction signature, the date, the hash in the ledger, the ledger index, some metadata about the object, such as its fields, the transaction index, the transaction results should be a success, and the delivered amount is shown. The transaction is validated. All right, so this verifies that we've been able to create the transaction and it's now on that test network. So that is how you can create a transaction for the XRP Ledger test network, specifically how to prepare, sign, and submit a transaction of paying XRP. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.